Hello everybody, Dane here, and today we are going to be doing the Booktube London tag. So this was created by Jim's Books Reading and stuff, and he invited uh, anybody, well he said, if you've watched Bridget Jones's Diary, visited the National Gallery, or have even the most tenuous connection to London, I invite you to do the tag. Um, I live about 30 miles away from London, it's about 20-25 minute train ride. Um, and actually that's why I live here, because I wanted to live somewhere after university that was close to London. And I ended up in High Wycombe. So, we're going to go ahead and do the Booktube London tag. Let's get started. Dane reads. Question one. The Time Machine by H.G. Wells is set in London. What is your favourite book about time travel? I mean, I did really like the time travel elements in uh, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling. But obviously, she has been cancelled um, for good reason. So, I mean, what else is there that's got time travel? Um... Mm, I don't think I read that many things that have time travel in. Funnily enough, I have read The Time Machine. Other than that, I, I can't really, I can't really think of anything else that I've read with time travel in. I've read stuff like alternate dimensions and stuff, but not really time travel. Uh, I did quite like actually uh, Jodie Taylor's books, um, but I can't remember what they were called, but they had some time travel in. Question number two, Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf is set in London. What book do you intend reading for next month's May of the Moderns? A book from the first half of the 20th century. Well, I'm not taking part in that, but I may end up doing it anyway. Mrs. Dalloway used to be my most hated book because um, I was forced to read it for university in over the, like, the course of like two days and it was uh, slow going. But I've since re-listened to it via audio and actually quite like it. Um, a book from the first half of the 20th century that I'm likely to read in May. Oh, it'll probably be um, any any of the sequels to The Wizard of Oz that were not written by Al Frank Baum because I've got to the point. Me and Joel Swagman are doing a bloody read of of, um, of the Wizard of Oz of the Wizard of Oz books, and we've got to the point where Al Frank Baum died. So now I think it's Ruth Plumley Tompkinson or something like that is her name. Um, and so we've got to those books now, and those were written in like 1918 or something like that. So. We'll have a few of those going out throughout the month of May because we're doing them every two weeks. Question number three. A Darker Shade of Magic by V. E. Schwab is set in four parallel Londons. Have you read any fantasy books set in our London or other Londons? Um, I have read Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman, which was set in a parallel London, I believe. I've actually written non-fancy books, but the Lightfold series of books, my cosy detectives, quirky cosy detective novels, are set in a London that's basically ours, but very slightly different. Which is just my excuse for getting away with any inconsistencies. <laughs> Question number four. Charles Dickens wrote many books set in London. Which is your favourite Dickens novel? Probably Oliver Twist. Um, I've read that the most times. Um, A Christmas Carol is probably a close second. Question number five. Sherlock Holmes is a famous fictitious resident of London. What is your favourite murder mystery? I mean, that's a very difficult one. I would probably say Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie. I think it's... Um, well, Agatha Christie is my favourite murder mystery writer, and Death on the Nile is probably my favourite of all of her books, um, if I had to choose. And then There Were None is great as well, though. Um, I'm actually probably going to get a tattoo soon on my wrist here of the Eye of Horus and the Egyptian Ankh, which is going to be a reference both to uh, Egyptian mythology, which fascinates me, and also Death on the Nile. Question number six. Paddington Bear by Michael Bond was named after Paddington Station in London. What is your favourite anthropomorphic animal in literature? I mean, possibly a Yorick Burnison from Northern Lights. I have him as a tattoo. Um, yeah, he was an armoured bear or Panzer Bjorn. I'm going to go with that for now. Question number seven. The Hogwarts Express departs from platform nine and three quarters at King's Cross Station. What was the last book you DNF'd? I have no idea. I don't DNF that often. Generally speaking, if a book was at a point where I'd be likely to DNF it, it normally ends up going into my bedtime books and then I, I finish reading it at night. The last book that I DNF... No, can't tell you. I'm sorry. I do DNF occasionally though, but I don't, I don't keep track of them and I forget them very quickly. Question number eight. Fever Pitch by Nick Hornby is about his obsession with the Arsenal football team. Which is your favourite sports team? I'm not really into sports. Um, when I was younger, I used to say Hartlepool United was my favourite football club um, or soccer team for, for you Americans. Uh, although Jim is American, I think, and he's still good at football, so that's good. Um, 
And the, but the reason that they were my favourite was because I used to play LMA Manager on um, the PlayStation 1. And at the time, uh, Hartlepool United was the worst team, uh, the worst league that you could manage. So they were the biggest challenge. And then I just sort of started watching them in real life. But yeah, really, I, I don't really watch any team sports. I do like snooker. Question number nine. Bridget Jones's Diary is a wonderful romantic comedy set in London. Which is your favourite romantic comedy? 